There are a number of recitations of this poem on YouTube, and they're all very good. But I've always felt that this poem provides an excellent etude for learning appropriate diction, cadence, and enunciation for dramatic vocal presentation. I would therefore like to offer this recitation as a demonstration of those traits. There are strange things done by the midnight sun, by the men who moil for gold. The Arctic trails have their secret tales that would make your blood run cold. The northern lights have seen queer sights, but the queerest they ever did see was that night on the marge of Lake Libarge. I cremated Sam McGee. Now, Sam McGee was from Tennessee, where the cotton blooms and blows. Why he left his home in the south to roam around the pole, God only knows. He was always cold, but the land of gold seemed to hold him like a spell. Though he'd often say in his homely way that he'd sooner live in hell. On a Christmas day, we were mushing our way along the Dawson Trail. Talk of your cold. Through the parka's fold, it stabbed like a driven nail. If our eyes we'd closed, then the lashes froze till sometimes we couldn't see. It wasn't much fun, but the only one to whimper was Sam McGee. And late that night, as we lay packed tight in our robes beneath the snow, and the dogs were fed and the stars o'erhead were dancing heel and toe, he turned to me, and Cap says he, I'll cash in this trip, I guess, and if I do, I'm asking that you won't refuse my last request. Well, he seemed so low that I couldn't say no, and he says with a sort of moan, It's a cursed cold, and it's got right hold till I'm chilled clean through to the bone. Yet, Taint being dead, it's the awful dread of the icy grave that pains. So I want you to swear that, foul affair, you'll cremate my last remains. Well, uh, Pal's last need is a thing to heed, so I swore I would not fail. And we started on at the streak of dawn, but, God, he looked ghastly pale. He crouched on the sleigh, and he raved all day of his home in Tennessee. And before nightfall, a corpse was all that was left of Sam McGee. There wasn't a breath in that land of death, and I hurried, horror-driven, with a corpse half-hid that I couldn't get rid because of a promise given. It was lashed to the sleigh, and it seemed to say, you may tax your brawn and your brains, but you promise true, and it's up to you to cremate these last remains. Now, a promise made is a debt unpaid, and the trail has its own stern code. In the days to come, though my lips were dumb in my heart, how I cursed that load. In the long, long nights, by the lone firelight, while the huskies round in a ring, Howled out their woes to the homeless snows. Oh, God, how I loathed that thing. And every day that quiet clay seemed to heavy and heavier grow. And on I went, though the dogs were spent and the grub was getting low. The trail was bad and I felt half mad, but I swore I would not give in. I'd often sing to the hateful thing, and it hearkened with a grin. Till I came to the marge of Lake Libarge, and a derelict there lay. It was jammed in the ice, but I saw in a trice it was called the Alice May. And I looked at it, and I thought a bit, and I looked at my frozen chum. 
Then here, said I, with a sudden cry, is my crematorium. Some planks I tore from the cabin floor, and I lit the boiler fire. Some coal I found that was lying around, and I heaped the fuel higher. The flames just soared, and the furnace roared. Such a blaze you seldom see. And I burrowed a hole in the glowing coal, and I stuffed in Sam McGee. Then I took a hike, for I didn't like to hear him sizzle so. And the heavens scowled, and the huskies howled, and the wind began to blow. It was icy cold, but the hot sweat rolled down my cheek, and I don't know why. And the greasy smoke, in an inky cloak, went streaking down the sky. I do not know how long in the snow I wrestled with grisly fear. But the stars came out, and they danced about, dear again I ventured near. I was sick with dread, but I bravely said, I'll just take a peek inside. I guess he's cooked. It's time I looked. Then the door I opened wide. And there sat Sam, looking cool and calm, in the heart of the furnace roar. And he wore a smile you could see a mile, and he said, Please close that door. It's fine in here, but I greatly fear you'll let in the cold and storm. Since I left Plum Tree down in Tennessee, it's the first time I've been warm.